I'll quickly explain this mantra. Tiyatha gade gade para gade para sam gade bodhiswa. I'll quickly explain this. So this mantra, this mantra is to tell us that don't stay where you are now. Don't stay in a miserable state. From the state of misery, go towards the state of ultimate happiness. How? It involves two things. What is the process? And what makes this process happen? What makes this process happen is the wisdom. The wisdom of emptiness. This wisdom of emptiness must be driven by a very powerful push, which is the unconditional love of bodhicitta. So these two things will make this process happen. What is the process? The process is gade gade para gade para sam gade bodhiswaha. So this process, tiyatha, means here is thus. Here is the process. Here is thus. What is that? Gade, gade. So this mantra, in I say a literal translation. Uh, there's a literal translation and the deeper meaning. The literal translation is the five steps. Go, the first go, the second go, and third, go beyond. Gate, gate, para gate. Para gate is go beyond. Para sangate, go utterly beyond. And then establish your bodhiswaha. Establish your full awakening. Wake up fully, fully wake up. Establish your full awakening. So this is the superficial meaning, the, uh, the provisional meaning. The first one, gate. Go, go from the state of suffering to the miseries. When you say that, this first go indicates the path of the path of accumulation. The first one. Second one is the path of preparation. Third one, para paragate. The third one is the path of seeing. And the fourth one, para sangate, path of meditation. Fifth one, Bodhiswaha, is the path of no more learning. So the five paths are indicated. Five paths, five paths by which to get to full awakening. So these five sections of the paths are indicated. So how to begin this path? First one, Gade. How to begin this path? This is a point. We have to begin from somewhere. We begin it, then we can expect to improve gade gade para gade so how to begin this is the question the next question how to begin is generate a very strong wish that i must achieve bodhiswaha anybody anybody who wholeheartedly thinks that i must achieve bodhiswaha which is buddhahood i must become buddha i must become perfect to benefit all the beings the moment you feel that you you step into the first part gade then from there we can go keep improving okay so this mind which says i will i will perfect myself where my love and affection where there is love and affection happens benefit is happening so this love and affection without the pain without this pain that is the final state is buddhahood May I achieve that Buddhahood for the benefit of all sentient beings? This mind is known as Bodhicitta. The so, so precious mind. Anytime you wholeheartedly, you spontaneously feel this, you become a Bodhisattva, Mahasattva. So there are two benefits. One, which is unseen benefit, which you will appreciate only later on, not now. Unseen benefit. That's a tremendous benefit there, uh, the unseen benefit, where your mind is being blessed. And for the time being, I'm not going to explain how it's going to be blessed. We keep that assigned. I'm more into the, i uh, say, the rational part. But I don't reject that part. I do, I know, I know that this effect is there. But uh, the, uh, for, uh, for the, usually for the modern educated people, so that part, explanation, the bless, how that's going to constantly bless you. That's going to be a little obscure phenomena, which can be which can be explained only after one 
get some understanding of what emptiness is, one gets some feel of what bodhicitta is, I'll keep that aside. For me, practically, which is more beneficial, is what I can, uh, what I can obviously see is that when I, whenever I recite this, right, I've been uh, maybe like, if not billions, for sure, some you know, 100,000 times I must have recited this since I was age five. And every now, when I recite this, Gade, Gade, Para, Gade, Para, Sam, Gade, Bodhi, Swaha. When I recite this, it gives me a feeling, of, a feeling of a little bit of nervousness. You know why? Because I've been reciting it. It's a nice reminder, like a teacher reminding me, Hey, Dorji, right? Don't remain in class one all the time. Go to class two, move to class three, class four. This is a reminder. Gade, gade, para gade, go, go. Every time I'm saying, go, go, go beyond, go utterly beyond, establish your awakening. Did I really go, <laughs> right? I've been saying this, go, go, since all these many years I've been saying this. Did I really take the step? Have I really gade? Is gade really happening, right? It really gives me a sense of urgency. Oh no, right? <laughs> so don't stay like this, hey, Dorji. Don't stay like this. Keep working on it. Keep working on it. Study more. How to do that? How to jump, plunge? How to plunge into this first gade? Generate this very compassionate mind of bodhicitta, altruistic mind, wishing to become Buddha for the benefit of all sentient beings. Generate it as soon as possible. Otherwise, you're reciting this mantra for all these many years is useless. This is a reminder for me. It's so powerful. It's so powerful. Okay. So the point is that with this, finally, be happy. Be kind to yourself. Let's not forget it. Be kind to yourself. This mantra should remind us. Be kind to yourself, number one. Number two, be wisely kind to yourself. Be kind to yourself means go to Bodhiswaha, right? Don't stay here. Don't stay with sickness, aging, death, COVID-19, and so forth. Go to Bodhiswaha where you are free from all the fears. But how? Be wisely kind to yourself. Go there. Take steps which will actually take you there. Don't take your turn. This is advice. Don't take your turn. Take the steps of compassion. Take the steps of wisdom, of interdependency, to wake up from the sleep of ignorance. You take these steps, no doubt, you are being so wisely kind to yourself that you are giving yourself the maximum happiness of the Buddhahood, full awakening, the ultimate happiness.